the objective of this video is to help you understand how to use table E to find the critical values when you're trying to determine whether or not uh, you'll accept or reject your null hypothesis. Uh, so we have a left tail test um, that we talked about in solid rock. We have a left tail test here, and so what we would see is we talked about um, this spot, this shaded area right here would be called our critical region. I'm just going to put CR for critical region. And then over here, the non-shaded would be our non-critical region. We would have a critical value, and that would be the value that we're looking for right here. And, and, and that's that location, that's that, that value is based on some level of significance that we determine that's kind of our cutoff score as to whether we would accept the null hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis. We can do this for both a left-tailed, a right-tailed, and we also can do it for a two-tailed test. When we do this, we'll use table F, and so we'll have a couple things we'll need to identify. And so you can see here, here's an image of table F. And, and for my students and in this course at Thomas University, what I want to re remind you of is that when you're inside of Connect Math and you're looking at this problem, and if you only have the online version of this textbook, then at this point what you would do is, is obviously you scroll down here and you see where it says tables. So if you needed to use table F, table E, whatever table it was, you click on tables and it brings up um, the most frequently used tables that you would need. And so you can see we've got table A, table B which we don't use, table B, table B, keep on going down and you would get to table B1 and we're almost to where we want to be obviously. There's table E, which we've used in previous sections. Table E, and then right past table E would be table F. And so that's the t-distribution table for finding the, 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 like I said, the critical values. Um, so we'll come back and we'll use this in just a minute, but I wanted to show you where to find that. So once again, for my students in my STAT 250 class, or my Math 250 class at, at Thomas University, when we're inside Connect, we would click on the tables button right here. So once we would get to this spot and, and we have a, a, a particular problem, so in this particular one we're looking for a left tail test. So we're trying to determine the critical value on the left hand side, whether it's less than um, would be some common language you might see. Uh, the first thing we need to establish is, is, well, what does table F look for? And so let's go ahead and pull table F up right here and, and kind of see. So when we look at table F and we scan across the top, we see that we have DF. And remember, DF stands for degrees of freedom. So in our case right here, Rn is equal to 6. Therefore, our degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, would be equal to 6 minus 1, or 5. We have an alpha level of 0 0.01, or 1%, essentially, is what we're looking at here. So 1% um, level of accuracy. And so what we would do is, is we, would, we would come across this table and we would say, okay, well, we're doing a one-tailed test. And we have a level of 0 0.01. We would come down to our degrees of freedom. Let me grab a different tool. We come down to our degrees of freedom, which is 5. And we would come across our degrees of freedom from the 5. We would come down from our established alpha level on a one-tailed test. And at that point, what we would do is we would identify that our critical value was that value right there. Now, we have to bring that back into the context of our problem and interpret what that's saying. Remember that when, we're, when we have our mean, this would be our mean of our standard normal distribution, if we're on the left-hand side, then our z-scores would be negative. So this would be negative z's on this side, excuse me, this side. And on this side, this would be positive. So our critical value, our C dot V, for this particular problem, would be negative 3.365. So that brings us to a close on this particular problem, because all we were looking for is how do we find the critical values. And this is a video demonstrating how to use table F to find that critical value.
Now, in future situations, we would take that critical value and compare it to a test value that we would calculate with a formula to establish whether or not we would accept or reject that null hypothesis.